So I don't know, you might want to grab some popcorn or something. This is probably going to be a long one. <laughs> I am here today with a book review slash discussion slash rant slash cry, maybe cry, <laughs> about The Cabin at the End of the World by Paul Tremblay. Now the first chunk of this video will be spoiler free, so if you haven't read the book yet, you don't have to worry about that. I will let you know when we start getting into the spoilers. Now I didn't know anything about this book going into it. The synopsis is incredibly vague while being very detailed at the same time. It's really weird. It does a really good job of describing the very beginning of the story. And that's it. You get to know how the story starts and you don't know anything else about it, which I really liked about that. I thought that was super intriguing and I was so interested. I was like, what is going to happen? I must read this book. Now, if I knew what this book was actually going to be about, I probably wouldn't have read it. So maybe it's a good thing the synopsis is like that, because I am glad that I read this book. It was really well done. But I have mixed feelings about it because of lots of things that I'm going to get into. What you get out of the synopsis is that a little girl is away at a cabin with her dads and she's playing with grasshoppers in the front yard and this really big huge guy shows up in the driveway who actually seems really nice and he plays with the grasshoppers with her but then these three other people show up and it seems really scary they've got these really weird weapons with them so when the little girl gets up to run inside and the big guy who's also friendly says your dads won't want to let us in when but they have to we need your help to save the world and that's all you get to know about the book just by reading the inside flap or the description on Goodreads or Amazon or what have you. Now, if you uh, want to know a little bit more about what is actually happening without me actually spoiling everything from the story, I will tell you what it's about before we get into the spoiler section, but if you don't want to know anything about the story going into it, then don't worry, I won't actually tell you. Um, I kind of liked that I went into it blind, and I've heard a lot of people really think that you should go into the story blind. It just kind of makes it more intense and more shocking, because for a big chunk at the beginning you're not entirely sure what these people mean by we need your help to save the world, and so it makes the beginning chunk a lot scarier. Without telling you any specifics, about why these people are here and why they think Wen and her dads can help save the world, let's get into some of my non-spoilery thoughts. So my first thought was that I didn't actually think this book was scary. I've, I've heard a lot of people say that it was really scary. I, I understand why people thought it was scary and I think having this situation happen to you would be really scary. It would be fucking terrifying. Um, and to think about that is really scary, but I was never scared while reading it. Reading it didn't make me frightened and I wasn't afraid to be home alone when I was done reading it like I have with other scary books. Uh, I did have a nightmare last night after finishing it though that was about the thing happening in this. So, I mean there are some obviously scary aspects like the idea of what is happening in the story is scary but I didn't find reading it to be scary. It was really intense though and I was nervous almost the whole time like my heart was pounding in my chest and I was just like holy shit what is gonna happen my next point is the characters the characters were so 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 well done I absolutely loved Andrew and Eric who are Wen's dads they were like so realistic Everything that they said and did, every way that they reacted to everything that happened, every situation I thought was so organic. Like it felt so natural. Lighting just changed a little bit there, didn't it? <laughs> it just felt so natural and realistic and exactly what I would expect people to do in this situation. Uh, the things that they said, the ways that they acted, their thoughts, the things that they thought about, super 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 well done and I really felt for them. I absolutely loved Eric and Andrew and I really liked Wen as well. The author did a really good job of painting Wen and everything that was going through her head and uh, the ways that she reacted to certain things and <sighs> he nailed the characters. He did a really really good job of nailing characters and even Leonard, the big guy who shows up and plays with the grasshoppers with Wen, he was really well done as well. 
The other three characters I thought a little less so. They weren't quite as drawn out, in my opinion, as uh, Eric, Andrew, Wen, and Leonard, but they were still fairly well portrayed. I thought the way certain things happened in it were well done. They didn't touch on it in a way that made it so hard to read because there is a really, really, really upsetting part in it to just in case that's something that you want to know. Um, incredibly upsetting. I don't want to spoil anything, but there is a part that's incredibly shocking. Very upsetting. Keep that in mind. <laughs> the other thing is this story is fucked up. <laughs> So again, if you want to go into it blind, but you want to know, like, if if you're afraid about what you're getting into, it's it's seriously fucked up. <laughs> um, and again, like I said, if someone told me what this book was about or how fucked up it was, I probably wouldn't have read it. <laughs> but again, I am glad that I read it. I don't know if I want to read another book by him, if all of his books are similar. I don't know if I can prepare myself for it. With this I didn't know it was coming. It was already happening. I was already in it and then I had to keep reading it because I had to see how it ended and I had to make sure everything ended up okay. Um, so it did get to a point where it wasn't so much super enjoyable. It was just that I had to find out what happened and I had to make sure everyone was okay and that everything turned out okay. I wasn't reading it so, so quickly because it was so amazing, which it was, but at the same time not because it was disturbing and fucked up. I'm very conflicted. I'm very conflicted about this. I feel like this is all I can say without the spoilers. So now, right before I get into spoiler discussion, for any of the people who want to know more about what the story is about, if they don't want to go into it quite as blind, uh, I'll tell you that. If you don't want any spoilers, you don't want to know what the story is about, this is your cue to leave. Go away. Have a good day. So this story is actually about four people who show up at this cabin on purpose. They have picked this cabin out somehow um, because the people occupying it, Andrew, Eric, and Wen, have to make a sacrifice within their family. So they have to kill one of their family members, Eric, Andrew, or Wen. One of them has to die and they have to be killed by Eric, Andrew, or Wen or else the world will end. That's what these four people say. They're here to make sure that someone from this family sacrifices someone from their family to stop the world from ending. And they hold them hostage in their own cottage and they tie them up and that is what it's about. It takes place over two days, I think. Just two days of being held hostage by freaks who think the world is gonna end if one of them doesn't kill one of their family members. So yeah, <laughs> that's what it's about. I don't think I would have read it if someone told me that's what it was about. Honestly, from the synopsis, I thought this was gonna be about aliens or something. And I don't know why I would have thought that aliens would come and say that they need their help to save the world because aliens usually come to destroy the world. But I don't know, that was what I thought from the synopsis. I was really wrong. <laughs> Now we're gonna get into spoilers, so if you haven't read the book and you don't want to know anything else about the story, goodbye, have a good day, <laughs> hope you enjoyed. Oh my god, spoilers. Okay. Okay, so I thought... I had... A, I had a feeling throughout the book that someone was going to accidentally die. But I also thought that if someone accidentally died, it would have counted as a sacrifice and then the world wouldn't have ended and then they wouldn't have known if the whole thing was true or not. They would have been like, well shit, is the world not ending because these people are crazy? Or is the world not ending because we killed someone? Uh, that's what I had an idea was going to happen. I had a tiny inkling for some reason that it was going to be when but I was terribly shocked and incredibly upset when it did happen to be when. But I did think that when it happened, it was really well done because it didn't, like there was obviously a lot about when being dead afterwards because she died like halfway through the book and there was a lot of Eric and Andrew crying over it, which I also thought was incredibly well done. I think how it portrayed them so well with them basically like being numb with grief like they were just numb to everything after that. And I thought it was so, so, so well done. 
and it just it was so I just wanted to break down and just sob I just wanted to cry all over the place but I I got teary-eyed I didn't sob there were people around I was also at work I didn't want to go back to work after my break being a fucking mess <laughs> so I tried real hard not to sob in other situations I might have it was really upsetting <laughs> and I was before this happened I thought this would make a really great movie I thought the movie would be really scary because for some reason seeing it on the screen I thought would be scarier than reading about it to actually watch and it would be so suspenseful but then I was like I don't want to watch one get shot in the face so I don't think I would watch this if it was a movie I don't think I would but I did like how the scene where she died was in her perspective and it didn't touch on it didn't go into detail about her getting shot very much it was and I liked the line that it used he pops back upright and vigorously attempts to shake the gun free yanking Andrew's arms up and down and side to side and then when doesn't see or hear or feel anything anymore oh shit man I'm gonna cry thought that part was really well done um because it didn't go into detail like it did with the other people being brutally murdered, which was disgusting. Um, and the detail about it afterwards, I thought was good because it wasn't, again, super detailed. They didn't, they did talk about her, I, her broken face or her mangled face or something, but they also talked about how they were crying, like they were crying and they didn't wipe the tears away because they didn't want to see the detail of her face. So they just saw like a red bloom on her face and stuff. So I liked that about it and I liked how much they oh, I'm gonna cry <laughs> I I liked the detail the, the details that were included afterwards and how they wrapped her in the blanket and they didn't they couldn't leave her behind and how they wanted to move the blanket away and kiss her but they didn't want to see her face and like it was fucking sad <laughs> but it was really well done but I was just so upset and I just I just wanted something to happen where she came back to life, which I, <laughs> I know is ridiculous. And in most other cases, I would be like, that's ridiculous, and a cop out. But in this case, I would have accepted it. And I would have been like, great, she's not dead. I'm happy. So the things that bothered me uh, about the story were the four people who showed up and said that they needed to make a sacrifice because every single time Eric and Andrew didn't make a sacrifice then one of the four people killed one of them and then a disaster happened and then Sabrina said later we kill one of our own and then a disaster happens and then we kill another one of our own and then a disaster happens and these people are here desperately trying to save the world and if killing one of their own makes a disaster happen why are they doing it? It makes no sense. It makes zero sense to me, and I hate that it wasn't explained further, especially because Sabrina was like, why haven't you asked us why we've killed each other? And she doesn't go into enough detail for it to make any fucking sense. If you killing each other makes the world end faster, why are you doing it? Because I thought you were here to make the world not end. I thought that was your whole purpose to this. <laughs> ah. So that was frustrating. And I also, and I know this part is, can totally be left un, unexplained because of the perspectives that it was told and what's important to the story and what's not, but it did bug me a tiny little bit not knowing if Redden was actually the guy who hit um, Andrew with the beer bottle. Because at first I thought he was doing it when he was just like, oh shit, I know who Redmond is. I thought he was trying to cause some kind of distraction and that's not what ended up happening. And that's fine, but it bugged me a little bit. Just that part, a, a little bit. And then... It's fine that the ending was open, and you can choose yourself if you think it's real or not. That's fine. I like those types of endings. But it was just so goddamn depressing. I <laughs> but at the same time, I did like the interaction that happened at the end when Eric was gonna kill himself, but then Andrew said, are you really gonna do that? Are you gonna leave me here by myself? Without you and without when? Which was just like, oh, Andrew. And, and then Andrew was like, maybe you should kill me, and then that would be the ultimate sacrifice, because you would be killing me, and then you would be by yourself. And then Eric was like, well, maybe I can kill you and then kill myself. 
And Andrew was like, well, you're not going to. And then they didn't kill each other, which I was happy about. I'm glad they lived. And maybe they can adopt a new child. <laughs> but maybe they won't because they'll never get over it. Or maybe the world will end. <laughs> uh. So I don't, I rated it four stars on Goodreads. Um, until when died, I thought it was going to be a five star book because even though it was so disgusting and disturbing, it was so well done. Um, but then when died and I was just, it was so upsetting and it was, it was just making me so uncomfortable. And then there was more brutal murders that were disgusting. <laughs> and I know this is a book that's supposed to make you feel uncomfortable. So, I mean, points to him for making me feel uncomfortable because I'm sure that's what he was trying to do. But I, it got, it did get to a point where I wasn't really enjoying it. I wasn't like, oh, this book is so amazing anymore. I was like, can something good please happen? <laughs> I rate books five stars if I can say confidently that I loved it. Um, and again, up until when died, I, I could say that I loved it. I didn't love it after that. Because I don't like it when children die. <laughs> but at the same time, the fuck, I love The Hunger Games and that is literally about children dying. <laughs> but it's different because the children who die in The Hunger Games, you don't really know them. I knew Wen. Wen was like a real person to me and fucking Paul Trombley took her away. And again, me saying these things makes it seem like it should be given five stars because he did such a good job making me so upset about killing this person who's not real. So I don't know. Maybe it does deserve five stars. I just, it was really disturbing. <laughs> but at the same time, it was supposed to be disturbing. <laughs> there was also the other things, though, that bothered me about why they were killing each other, making the world end faster. That made zero sense to me. Also, the last chapter kept switching between third person and first person, which didn't really make much sense to me, and it was kind of annoying. <laughs> There we go. That's why it's not five stars. So anyway, if you've read this book, tell me your thoughts in the comments. But if you're going to write spoiler comments, warn people first. Write spoiler in capital letters before you write your comment so people don't go through the comments accidentally spoiling themselves if they want to read non-spoiler comments. That's that. I feel a little bit better having talked about it and shouted a little bit about it. I don't know if you've read any other books by Paul Tremblay, you can tell me if they are just as fucked up as this. If they are, I might not read them. If they are less, I may pick them up. <laughs> I guess that's all. I have a book coming out hopefully next year. It's called Tickets to Karis Vale, and it's a YA fantasy with steampunk elements that also has murder, but not quite as much murder as this. And I'm gonna say less disturbing than the murder in this, but it does have some murder. It also has kidnapping, and it has stealing, and it has betrayal, and magic, and it's pretty exciting, and I'm really proud of it, and I have a Kickstarter going right now that's almost over. It's only going until October 21st, and I still need like $1,500. So if you want one of the really cool rewards, there's actually not many exclusive rewards left, but if you would like to get your hands on one of them or you would like to help me publish my book, you can click this link right here and it will take you to my Kickstarter where you can do such things. You can also click up here to subscribe if you haven't done that yet and over here is gonna be a video, uh, my last video or something. You can click on that too if you want. <laughs>